With increasing levels of violence on the capital streets, the taser gun has become a crucial part of the Met's defence armoury. And now its role in crime fighting could become even bigger. Because the Met's commissioner, Bernard Hogan Howe, is considering boosting the availability of tasers for police in the capital and may equip all response vehicles with one. But can the police convince the public that these potentially lethal weapons will be used responsibly? BBC London's Home Affairs correspondent Guy Smith investigates. OK, walk out the door, show me your hands. Come on, come to the door, right? Taser, taser! Hello? To officers, right. it's the crime-fighting tool of choice. And we have to make sure that we bring that situation to a very swift conclusion. A large number of officers have asked for this equipment. But to the public, tasers are controversial. A police weapon with deadly potential. People will die, it's bound to two, three, five shot, it's sufficient to kill you. Hold the Taser X26 and the first thing that strikes you is how tiny and how light it is. It feels and almost looks like a child's toy. Attach a cartridge though and it assumes its full potential. Put it down, put it down. In this police training session, the full force of the Taser's 50,000 volt shot is put to the test. It's the most powerful weapon in the hands of a non-firearms officer in the UK. In London, around 100 people have been tasered in the last year. Law student Justice Livingston is one of them. Suddenly, I saw four police officers got onto the carriage. I picked up my briefcase and my FT, and I was about to leave. I was told to sit down uh, by a female police officer, which I politely did. She asked me to open my briefcase, which I did also. She saw a toy gun. I bought it initially for my son. Earlier, a member of staff had mistaken the toy for a pistol and called the police. Officers arrived, thinking Justice had a dangerous weapon, and attempted to restrain him. There was a struggle. At that juncture, uh, the four police officers brought out a taser gun, and four of them shot at me spontaneously. The pain on this st um, stun gun is something indescribable. I was feeling it in my body, in my chest and my heart, you know, shaking. The police can taser anyone at any time in life-threatening scenarios, but some believe officers are abusing these powers. The uses of the tasers, in my opinion, and my client's opinions, they have been used unlawfully. Sophie Kahn is a lawyer who specialises in human rights, but recently her work has been dominated by claims that police are misusing tasers. There are some circumstances where the taser can be used, but the ones that I'm dealing with, they've been inappropriate uses. Here at the Mets Training Centre in Gravesend, officers are taught to use tasers as a last resort. It is the best training package in the world. Our training is so robust that we actually question officers during the training programme about their use, about their rationale for actually using the taser device. You need to put your hands on top of your head. As well as training, officers can refer to a user manual which advises caution on tasering people with certain health conditions. But there are no hard and fast rules. There are no uh, specific guidelines about who can or who can't be tasered. Officers aren't going to necessarily know somebody's uh, health or the state of their health when they have that in, uh, initial interaction with them. And that, say critics of TASER, is the problem. Confronted with dangerous situations, officers are expected to make split-second decisions. And there's a particular risk to people with mental health conditions, with heart conditions, with people of small stature, with children, with elderly people. All of those situations taser is risky. The issue is with the police they have to identify when and where to use the taser um, and not to do a knee-jerk reaction and just deploy the taser when and in any circumstance which is what's happening at the moment. This footage taken on a mobile phone shows justice being carried away by officers after being tasered. Scotland Yard says tasers were deployed as a last resort after attempts to physically restrain him failed. But Justice has filed a formal complaint. He claims the police were heavy-handed, tasering him repeatedly within a few minutes. He says these wounds are his evidence. I feel very, very heartbroken 
and, and I feel seriously victimized. The fact that uh, I was still alive is, is a mystery I have to give thanks. In America, tasers have been cited as a contributory factor in the deaths of more than 300 people, according to Amnesty International. And research has shown that repeated tasering can be fatal. There are particular risks to death and injury where taser is used in prolonged circumstances. Before being allowed out onto the streets with stun guns, every officer receives 18 hours of training. Taser, taser! Hold! Hold! They're taught to look for any signs of abnormal behaviour that may indicate a suspect's potential for violence. With regards to how they read people, what we have to look at is what is that person doing at that particular time. Just give me a phone and I haven't put that knife in the floor. In this scenario, the officers need to think very clearly and very hard about how close that person's getting. We're looking for them to use verbal communication all the way through this anyway. Look at your chest. Look at your chest. Take your taser! Hold it! Hold it! More than 3,000 Met officers are currently trained to use tasers. If the new commissioner deploys them in every police response vehicle, then at least 3,000 more officers would need to be trained doubling the number of tasers on the capital streets. On the front line, officers have a number of weapons at hand in the fight against crime. Occasionally, they deploy tasers alongside CS spray. Our research has revealed that when they are both used at the same time, there are risks. We set up an experiment to see just how dangerous it is. This shield has been rigged with the same voltage as a standard police taser. When it is doused with CS spray, this is the result. In a leaked document, we've discovered that last year seven incidents were referred to the Independent Police Complaints Commission. In each, CS spray and taser had been used together. In two of those cases, members of the public suffered burns. You've got a number of officers turning up to an incident and almost simultaneously someone sprayed someone and another officer felt there was a bigger threat and discharged taser. While the fresh liquids on that person's body, the moment the electric spark took place, the whole thing uh, incandesced and burned. It's almost like tipping brandy on a um, Christmas put. The Association of Chief Police Officers says it's aware of the issue and that there is training guidance for officers about the potential flammability when using tasers. Erin Bauer is head of a company that specialises in providing UK police forces with high-tech training applications and restraint tools. He's spent the last decade trying to eradicate the combined risks of tasers and CS spray. We've done a lot of research with the Home Office and the police looking into a non-flammable incapacitant sprays that work at the totally taser safe. More than half of UK forces have adopted this taser safe spray, but the Met, Britain's biggest, has not. Peter Nehru led the introduction of taser into the UK almost 10 years ago. That's a real risk and it's not an acceptable risk. It's just not right that somebody gets burnt as a result of the police use of force. So how acceptable then is it that some forces are still using CS spray? Well, it's as they introduce taser more generally, they should be going back and really reconsidering all the risk. And this is an obvious one. CS plus taser equals, equals spark plus flammable material. But despite growing concerns about taser, they have become vital tools in the police's armory. Statistically, on 90% of occasions, the mere presence or the showing of the taser itself is enough to make people think twice about what they are doing or what they are about to do. We clearly appreciate that as a, as a distance control weapon against very violent people in life-threatening situations, a taser is more preferable than a firearm and it has a role to play in policing, we recognise that. But we do not want to see electroshock weaponry, firearms that are defined in UK law, rolled out to every single officer.